Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Airflow Tutorial. In this video, we will learn about Airflow key concepts so you can have a strong foundation of Airflow and understand all the magic behind it. If you like the video, please make sure to smash that like button. Let me know in the comment below if you are currently using Airflow or how do you like my video so far? Or is there any data science related topic that you would like to know more? Thank you very much and let's get into the video. So an overview about Airflow. Airflow is a workflow management system which is used to programmatically author, schedule, and monitor workflows. In my opinion, Airflow is currently the best workflow management system out there. So a workflow in Airflow is called a DAC or Directed Acyclic Craft. So a DAC is a collection of all the tasks you want to run and it is organized in a way that reflects data relationship and dependency. So if you take a look at the uh, image here, this is a DAC and each of the box here is a task and all the arrow uh, represent their relationship and dependency among the task. So directed acyclic graph is an important concept. To understand what is a directed acyclic graph, first we need to understand the graph data structure. This is a very special data structure in computer science. So a graph has two main parts. The vertices or nodes is the circle here where the data is stored and the edges are the connection which connect all the nodes. So graphs are used to solve many real life problems because they are used to represent networks. For example, social network sites like Facebook or LinkedIn I build using the concept of graphs. So below is an example of a graph uh, represent a social network connection. A system of roles uh, like Google Maps are uh, also built using graph. Other example like airline, uh, airline flights from city to city or how the internet, uh, internet is connected. Uh, there are a lot of applications are built on top of graphs. So that is the graph data structure. So to represent direction in a graph, we talk about two main concepts, undirected graph and directed graph. So undirected graph uh, is the relationship exists in both direction and the edge has no direction. So in this example, this is an undirected graph. So if uh, uh, you can see the two note here, if Mary was a friend of Francis and Francis would likewise be a friend of Mary. So this is undirected graph because the edge had no direction and the reason the relationship exists in both directions. Uh, directed graph in, or digraph, the edges in a graph are all one way. So that's why you have an arrow here. So an example graph is the course requirement for a computer science major. So the class prerequisite graph here is clearly a direction, directed graph since you must take some classes before orders. So in this example, if you want to take the class CS220, first you need to take Math 151 first before you can take CS220. So this is an example of directed graph. Another concept of a graph is called a cyclic graph and cyclic graph. A cyclic graph a graph that has no cycle and cyclic graph uh, that a graph that has cycle. So a cycle in a directed graph is a path that starts and ends at the same node. So for example here, V5, V2, V3, V5, if we follow the path or follow the arrow, it ends at the same node. So this is a loop or a, a cycle loop. So in summary, we talk about directed graph, we talk about a cyclic graph, so directed a cyclic graph is a graph that has no cycle and the data in each node flow forward in only one direction. Uh, I know there's a lot of information to unpack there just about like directed a cyclic graph. So if people uh, ask you what is directed a cyclic graph, you just need to remember one word and that word is what I like highlighted here, one direction because they flow in one direction. Uh, and there's also a famous 
pop music band out there called One Direction as well. And in a weird way, I find it much easier to remember that way. So if people ask you what is directed as psychic graph, you can say One Direction. So with the understanding of directed as psychic graph, we can now talk about an airflow DAC on airflow workflow. So it is very useful to represent a complex data flows using a graph data structure. So each node in a graph is a task and the edges represent dependency among tasks. So all this task here will depend on this one, the start task to run and finish successfully before all of this can run. So that's the dependency among the task. So these graphs are called computation graph or data flow graphs, and it transforms the data and it flow through the graph and enable very complex numeric computation. So given the data only need to compute it once on a given task, that means the data has been transformed to the computation here, and the transformed data then carry forward in one di di uh, direction only. Um, and since it's only one direction, is the graph is clearly directed and then cyclic. So this is why airflow jobs are commonly referred to as DAX, directed a cyclic graph. So I hope the explanation is clear enough for you to now understand the airflow DAX concept. Uh, a side note here is if you work in the big data or data science industry, you will see a lot of a cutting edge framework if you using uh, graph data structure. An uh, example here is, is a TensorFlow, which is an open source machine learning framework from Google. Uh, TensorFlow also use uh, data flow graph to represent uh, your computation in terms of dependency between individual uh, operations. So if you take a look at the image here, you see all the data it flow through all of the operation, right? So next we talk about operators and task. So an airflow workflow is called a DAC, but DACs do not perform any actual computation. Instead, operators determine what actually get done. So an example here is the batch operator, which is used to run a batch command. So once an operator is instantiated, it is referred to as a task. So in order to instantiate a batch operator, you need to provide a task ID and a DAC container. So let me repeat. So when you first starting your work, writing your workflow, um, you have to think first, what, I what, I, what am I trying to do in this workflow? So the first task, I need to run some query, I need to execute some batch command. Uh, so that is an operator. And when you instantiate it, that means you instantiate this, op this batch operator, you create a task ID and then you assign it to your DAC or your workflow, then this become a task, right? So each task describe what are you trying to do, and a DAC is just a container that is used to organize all the tasks and set the execution context. So we, we talk about operators and tasks, but there are multiple category of operator. Typically, uh, operators are classified into three categories, sensor, operators, and transfer. So the first category is sensor. So sensor, this is a certain type of operator that uh, will keep running until a certain, certain criteria is met. Uh, example including uh, waiting for a certain TAM or a, a, an external file or upstream data source. Um, so we here we have like two uh, sensor, right? HDFS sensor and name high partition sensor. So HDFS sensor is the sensor that is used to wait uh, for a file or folder to land on your Hadoop file system. Um, so we talk, we have talked about this before in the first video of Airflow introduction, uh, where I talk about the execution dependency. Uh, an example use case is when you have some upstream, you know, workflow that every day produce uh, an uh, HDFS file. And if you don't know when the upstream workflow will be finished, how can you schedule the downstream workflow to consume and do some transformation with a file produced by the upstream workflow?
So in Airflow, in your downstream workflow, that is when you use the HDFS sensor. So when you use HDFS sensor and you and so that every minute it just wake up and check if the upstream file is available. If not, it just keep running and every minute keep checking until the file is available. That means it's been uh, successfully run by the upstream workflow. Then the criteria is met and then it move on to the next task to run and process the data. So usually sensor is the first task in your workflow. Uh, I call it pre-check condition um, before it, uh, it actually run any computation. So operator is a second category um, which is used to trigger data transformation. So in an ETL process, uh, extract transform loading, which is ETL, this one represent the transform step that transform your data. So operator triggers certain action. Uh, we have a couple operator here, bash operator, which is used to execute a bash command, Python operator, you know, you use a call Python function, hive operator, which is used to uh, run a hive query or hive script, and BigQuery operator, uh, which is used to execute some Google BigQuery SQL query. A transfer, which is the final operator category, which is used to move data from one location or one system to another. Uh, we have two uh, transfer operator here. The first one is MySQL too high uh, transfer. The name is self-explanatory itself. So uh, this one is used to move data from MySQL to the Hive. And the S3 to Redshift uh, transfer operator is used to load file from AWS or Amazon Web Service S3 to the uh, Redshift. So in order to uh, work with operator, um, Airflow provide a lot of pre-built operator for many common tasks. There are more and more operator being built and added by the community. Uh, I find it easily to just go to the Airflow official GitHub repo. Uh, so if you go to the Airflow official GitHub repo, here you just type in Airflow GitHub. Right, and you go to this is the first one usually in the official GitHub repo, and you go here, and specifically in the Airflow contrib, which is contributor uh, directory, and in the operator, you find a lot of the contributed, uh, the community, you know, contribute uh, operator that you can just pick in and use. So. If you're looking for an operator, uh, for example, like run a query in database like Postgres, MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, or run any cloud services, uh, connect and run any cloud services, you can just go here and look up for any specific operator and just use them. Uh, in case um, you have an internal service, um, a specific use case that Airflow does not have uh, any supported operator, and you can easily extend the base operator class to create your custom operator. So an uh, example here, the Hive operator um, is inherit from the base operator. And you can see a lot of example here as well. So for example, in, in the BigQuery operator, it, it extend or inherit from the base operator. So you can write your own custom operator by just, you know, uh, extend from the base operator. Um, next, we talk about defining test dependency. So if you watch my previous uh, video, we have talked about it. So after defining it, uh, your workflow, your DAC, and instantiate all the tasks, you can then set the dependency or the order in which tasks will be executed. And task dependency uh, as set, uh, either using the set upstream or set downstream operator or the bit ship operator. And finally, uh, I wanted to talk about the concept of DAC runs in task instances because when we talk about airflow we talk about workflow that runs through TAM so a key concept in airflow is the execution TAM so the execution TAMs begin at the DAX start date and repeat every schedule interval what does it mean so in this example here 
in the default argument section, I specify the start date at December 1st, which is a specific day from the past. And the set schedule interval here is uh, running daily. So when I enable this daily DAG, Airflow will immediately create a list of execution date up until today and immediately run all of them. So the schedule execu uh, execution time will be, you know, first, you know, it's start from start date, right? So first it would be December 1st and then December 2nd, December 3rd and keep going forward. So for each execution time, a DAG run is created and operate under the context of that execution time. So a DAG run is simply just a DAG that has a specific execution time. So DAGs and tests are a very like abstract concept and DAG runs a DAX that runs at a specific uh, a certain time, and task instances are the tasks that belong to that DAX runs. So each DAX run and task instance will be created and executed uh, with a specific time, and also their status or the state will be locked in the Airflow metadata uh, database. So you have the the status of them, like the state of them, like, like are they are currently on queue, or they currently running, or if they fail, or they're being skipped or they've been retry something like that. So uh, we can, uh, if you want to, if you take a look at this example, it is more clearly. So if you take a look at this sample in this screenshot, uh, when I have a DAC here, right? So this is a, a very abstract concept, a DAC, and each of this is a task. So a DAC run is, if you have a DAC here, and the start day is specified on January 8th. And the schedule interval is daily. And you can see clearly here in the tree view section where each of the circle is a DAC run at a certain time. And the little square boxes at all the test instances belong to that DAC run. And this is how a DAC and a test in airflow is created and executed through TAM. So this is the end of our tutorial. Uh, in this video, we have learned about some Airflow concept. Uh, we have learned about uh, what is an Airflow workflow, uh, why it's called DAC uh, or directed a cyclograph and the meaning behind that word, uh, the magic of operators in tests and where to find useful operator uh, if you want, uh, when you want to write your uh, workflow, uh, the concept of TAM in Airflow that creates DAC run in test instance belong to specific execution time. So I hope after this tutorial, you will now have a strong foundation of Airflow so you can use the knowledge not just in the Airflow framework, but anywhere else. Uh, also, seeing multiple people have requested more tutorial about big data and cloud services. Uh, so in the next video, we will go over a more practical example where you can follow me step by step in which I will build uh, a data pipeline using Airflow to connect and run multiple cloud services. Uh, so this is the end of our uh, video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more great content. Thanks for watching.